Welcome inside Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee, where tonight the 15th ranked Tennessee Volunteers hope to rebound from the recent off-court issues as they host the Charlotte 49ers. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart. Tonight marks the first game for the Tennessee Volunteers since Coach Bruce Pearl suspended indefinitely four of his top eight players following their arrest on weapons and other charges. Those players star Tyler Smith, fellow starter Cameron Tatum and key reserves Melvin Goins and Brian Williams. Coach Bruce Pearl spoke with reporters following the incident. No, I just apologize. I'm, 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 I'm terribly sorry. And I think the guys are too. And um, um, our team will do everything we possibly can to come together and represent and, uh, and, and continue to do good things on the court and off the court to, uh, to restore our image. Time now to bring in my partner, Barry Booker. And Barry, how do the volunteers handle this from a basketball sense? Well, it'll have a huge impact on this club. Bruce Pearl likes to press. Tennessee gets up and down the court a lot. And I think this club will have a have, will be greatly affected by the loss of these four players. You don't have the depth. You're not able to go to that press as much as Tennessee was in the past. Well, here's a look at the production loss. Smith at 11.7 points per game. Also the top ball handler in the SEC. Tatum 8.7. Goins the backup point guard. And Williams an enforcer underneath. And Tyler Smith, you're all SEC, uh, SEC player of the year candidate for this club. Your leader in assists. A huge impact from these four players not being available. And here's the impact of the suspensions. Well, 40% approximately of your points, about 40% of the minutes played, I mean, this will have a dramatic impact on this club. We're going to find out tonight against a pretty decent Charlotte club what Tennessee has left without those four players. The Volunteers will suit up six scholarship players and three walk-ons for tonight's contest against Charlotte, a team that beat Louisville by 22 at Freedom Hall last month. Opening tip is next. Shooter, a guy who plays in the post but loves to step away from the defender and stroke that jump shot. And Scotty Hobson, Tennessee's leading scorer throughout this season. The Vols will need more production from him tonight without those four suspended players. A look at the starting lineups. First for the 10 and 3 49ers, Dario Green coming off of the season. Bobby Mays, the point guard, J.P. Prince, Scotty Hobson, Ronaldo Woolridge getting the start, and Wayne Chisholm, the senior leader, averaging right at 11 points and six rebounds per contest. Teams taking the floor, the Tennessee Volunteers in their home white, trimmed in orange. Charlotte 49ers in their road green. Charlotte coming off a 76-67 loss against Georgia Tech on Saturday night. Tennessee in their last ball game ended Memphis 23 game home winning streak with a victory over the Tigers in the FedEx Forum and Tennessee starts on offense. A couple of new starters out there. Ronaldo Woolridge jumping center after spending a lot of this season as the 11th man in Tennessee's rotation. And lots of different things on the court tonight for these volunteers. In fact, Ronaldo Woolridge has averaged only eight minutes a game. They go immediately inside the chisholm and he makes his presence felt. And a turnover by Charlotte before they can barely even inbounds the ball. Bobby Lutz, the head coach of the 49ers since 1998, now in his 12th season, 209 and 149. His record, he's the all-time winningest coach in Charlotte history. A dream start for Tennessee. They get Wayne Chisholm involved, get the, the easy lay-in. Then Scotty Hobson gets the three. So you got Hobson and Chisholm, your top two remaining production players, stepping up and getting the job done right away. Tennessee getting off to a fast start. That will give them a lot of confidence. A question for this club, without those four players, how are you going to play? You get off to this fast start. That gives you a boost. Shamari Spears is fouled on the play by Bobby Mays. Bruce Pearl in his fifth season since 2005, the head coach, 108 and 39. 18th season overall with 425 career victories, including his years at Southern Indiana and at Milwaukee. Spears at the line. Spears a transfer from 
Spears is from Salisbury, North Carolina, so he transferred to be back home, but he was playing for the Eagles, playing quite a bit, averaging close to 10 points a game his sophomore season. When he decided to leave, Woolridge fires the three-pointer, and the rebound is controlled by Braswell. So take a look at the keys of the game, Barry, for the Charlotte 49ers. Well, Charlotte, they have the depth advantage, a rare situation playing against the Tennessee club. The 49ers have to convert in transition. They have the great point guard in Dewan Harris to help make that happen and get off to a fast start. Tennessee may be a little shaky confidence-wise. Important for the 49ers to start off well and help shake that confidence a little farther. 49ers have lost two of three since a seven-game winning streak left them 9-1 and one on the season. Dewan Harris with the three-pointer. And here's a look at the Tennessee Volunteers, Barry, and their keys to victory. For the Volunteers, focus. They've been talking a lot about the suspensions and all those activities these last few days. It's time to play basketball tonight. And Tennessee cannot have Wayne Chisholm or J.P. Prince or any of their top guys getting in foul trouble. Only six fault scholarship guys. They have to have them all available all night long. And that'll put Chisholm at shooter. Gives the ball. Expect Wayne Chisholm to <laughs> touch the ball a little bit more. J.P. Prince to put the ball on the floor a little bit more. Rolando Woolridge to shoot the ball a little more. And how about that? Dewan Harris split the defense. He is so quick. Lightning fast. The little guy. He was a blur. Getting it all the way to the basket. Chisholm steps up and hits the three-pointer. So Chisholm and Hobson in particular have really stepped things up here in light of the recent issues for the Volunteers. Six points here early on for Wayne Chisholm. As he is showing some leadership. Chisholm been bothered by a, a injured pelvis yep. for much of the season. He said today that he felt, felt good, felt healthy. Dario Green picking up where he left off against Georgia Tech, nails the three-pointer, and that was a big concern for Bruce Pearl. This is a hot and cold Charlotte team. He said they could easily come out and hit four straight three-pointers to open the game. And you see they're three of three from the floor to start it. Dario Green, 31 points against Georgia Tech. He can absolutely light it up from three-point range. The balls will have to know where he is and get to him. Hobson had it poked away from behind. The feet ahead to Dario Green. He'll lay it in, and the Hornets have a three-point lead, or rather the 49ers have it. <laughs> I knew I would do that before the night was over, so he got it out of the way. The 49ers have the three-point lead. Prince to Woolridge. Woolridge draws contact. No foul was called. He got the basket. Nice job by Ronaldo Woodridge putting that up on the glass, taking that contact and finishing strong. Getting some points on the board here early on. 23 scored in the first three and a half minutes of the game. The last game against Memphis, Wilderness with the put in. Last game against Memphis, Wilderness with the put in. Last game against Memphis, and no points scored until like uh, <laughs> past the first media timeout into the 15th minute. Tennessee is a really good offensive. Chisholm left alone. Charlotte's going to have to do something about him down there. Eight points already for Wayne. With Tyler Smith, who had been the playmaker for the Vols, scored 17 a game last year, but this year averaging only about 11 points a game. His point production down dramatically. And now with him out, Tennessee working their offense around Wayne Chisholm down low and outside. Woolridge, the son of Orlando Woolridge. Ronaldo knocks that one down. Wilderness in the corner for Charlotte, airballed it. Whip a pass down the floor to J.P. Prince. What a pass. It's like a baseball. Wayne Chisholm just tossing it out there in front of J.P. Prince, letting him run it down. And the ball, 18 points here early. Tennessee offense clicking. How about this? 32 points in the first four and a half minutes. Track meet going on here. Pickpocket, Hobson had it taken away by Harris. Well, be really careful when you get around these quick guards for UNC Charlotte. Braswell, the rebound, and Prince gets it after he misses. All the way through 
the Charlotte defense. <laughs> like a hot knife through butter on that one. 20 points for the Volunteers in the first five minutes. Yeah. Like a, a hot knife through non-existent butter. The Charlotte <laughs> defense just not there that time. Bobby Lutz, his hands extended. What are you guys doing? Spears had his shot blocked. Out of bound on the Volunteers. Ronaldo Woolridge, one of the guys needing to step up. In fact, getting his first start of the season tonight. Well, hit a three. He stepped up. Volunteers lead by six. Minus these four players, but no, we are not going to slow down the tempo. And the Vols are making a statement as we see the players they've used the last five games, 10, 13, 11. That is Bruce Pearl style. You heard him just say that he'll, he'll probably only play nine tonight. But the Volunteers running to the offensive end of the court, not afraid to play fast against a Charlotte team that has very quick guards as well. Charlotte started five of five. They've missed their last five, while the Volunteers are on an eight of nine start here in this ball game from the floor. And a foul away from the dribble. Range, but here's the opportunity for these Volunteers who haven't been able to get in the mix like Ronaldo Woldridge, like Skylar McBee, Josh Bone, who we'll see a little bit later on. Those guys are getting a chance to get on the court and show what they can do. Shot off the mark by Harris. Ahead it comes to Bobby Mays. Mays, reverse, nope. Chisholm tries to stay with it. Lost the headband, still got the basket. Wayne Chisholm, a man possessed here early on in double figures already. And here's a look at the ball players that will see increased playing time because of these suspensive end of the court. And these volunteers, they, they can play. These three guys who have been sitting on the bench quite a bit this year, Ronaldo Woodridge looks like he could start for anybody in the country. And he's been the 11th man on this Tennessee club. 12-0 run over the last two and a half minutes as the Volunteers have opened up a nine-point lead. Three on three there. Number three, Dewan Harris. Number three, Bobby Mays. Real battle on that low block. Kitty Hall's got his hands full. The Shamari Spears are down to five on the shot clock. Spears. They found a man open in the corner. And Skyler McBee whips it ahead to Scotty Hobson. May stayed with it. Timeout call by Bobby Luke. What a start by the Volunteers. Volunteers exploding offensively early on. They are getting out in transition and making things happen. Hobson gives it up to Mays, and the little guy does not back down, steps in there, hangs with it, forces that shot up, gets two for the balls, and they're at 25. And we're not seven minutes into the game. 25-14, Tennessee with the lead. They are 10 of 12 from the floor to start this ball game. Don't miss Sports Night weeknights at 6 and 11 Eastern, 5 to 10 Central here on CF. Candid and entertaining discussion of basketball in the Southeast Sports Night. Really impressed with the way the Tennessee Volunteers have approached this thing. Talking to Scotty Hobson today, you know, he said that the guys are down about the situation, but the team as a whole still very confident in their abilities to win. I had a chance to talk to Ronaldo Woldrich, Josh Bone, a couple of guys who are going to get a chance to play a lot more. Those two players very confident in their ability and excited to get the opportunity to get out on the court a bit more and show what they can do. And number 24, John Byard, and then went to Southern Illinois, and then came back to Tennessee as a walk-on. So not your typical walk-on, a guy who no. is good enough to be a Division I scholarship player. Oh, he was playing for Southern Illinois, yeah. Yeah, and Skylar McBee as well. He's not on scholarship, but has been in the rotation for this Tennessee Balls Club that's ranked 16th in the country right now. So Tennessee, no need to cry any tears for this ball club. They still have some tension. Prince falling away. <laughs> been close to four minutes since Charlotte scored. Both oh, for their last eight. A horrible shot. I feel like Bill Walton. <laughs> horrible. 
Here's a look at Bruce Pearl and his thoughts on playing the 49ers. They're very big, athletic, well-coached, and they come in with a three-game winning streak over the balls. I don't know how good this Tennessee team is right now with six scholarship players and three walk-ons. In fact, the last time they played was in 2001 when they beat Tennessee in the first round of the NCAA tournament, what turned out to be the final game for Jerry Green as the head coach of balls. Yeah, that three-game winning streak dates back about 12 years. So not, not a true indication of the, of the matchup we have tonight. And this is the ninth all-time meeting between these two teams dating back to the very first game that was played between these two in 1976. The first game in Knoxville coming in 95, and Tennessee has lost three of their last four. But again, nobody on the floor here tonight remotely involved with any of those previous eight contests. Long-range three-point attempt that time. They'll shoot threes now. That was Shamar Bowden from way out. And Charlotte is on a scoring drought here. They've been stuck on that number 14 for quite some time. They are number one in the Atlantic 10, averaging over seven three-pointers per game. J.P. Prince had it knocked away. And he got hacked across the arm on that one. Didn't get the call. Bowden again. And that breaks the drought. That's their first field goal in over five minutes. Shamar Bowden has, was scoreless in the last four games for Charlotte, but not bashful about letting that one fly in a hurry. Able to drill that three. He's the number two three-point shooter on this team. Nice pass from Skyler McBee. The shot by Kenny Hall was challenged. Phil Jones, a great shot blocker for Charlotte, able to alter that shot. One of the top shot blockers in school history. Inside, the foul is going to be called on Tennessee. That's going to be on Prince. And the Charlotte team, pretty good free throw shooting team collectively. And tonight, both teams shooting the ball well. That's from the floor, 10 of 15 and 6 of 15 for Charlotte. They started out one, make it 5 for 5 to begin the ball game. So they're only one field goal out of their last 10 attempts. And although Wardrich taking another three-point shot that last trip, he needs to take his time a little bit. Let those shots come to him, not force anything. Kenny Hall with the steal. Josh Bone, the spin move, and the basket. And for Josh Bone, just his third and fourth point of the season. Playing in his third game after sitting out first semester and the second semester last year, transferring from Southern Illinois. Josh Bone, nice job in traffic, able to lay that one home. Dario Green, sophomore out of Panama City, Florida. Ten on the shot clock for Charlotte, fires the three. Rebound snagged by Woolridge. J.P. Prince will have a bigger role bringing that ball down the floor. Bone firing away, making the most of his opportunity. <laughs> We've seen a, a few Tennessee players take some quick shots, some ill-advised shots. I think these volunteers, some of it inexperienced, some of it guys just trying to make more happen than they're capable of doing. Long range, there's Bowden with the three-pointer. He's hit a couple of those. Seeing some ill-advised shots from Charlotte as well. The 49ers able to knock a couple of those down. Foul is going to be called away from the ball. What has Tennessee been able to do defensively against this Charlotte team that got off to such a hot start? I think uh, Charlotte has gotten away from playing from inside out. First few possessions, Charlotte jammed it inside. They got their big guy, Shamari Spears, involved early. But of late, they have been forcing up those three-point shots with volunteer defenders in their face. Kind of like Tennessee is doing there. Mays Chisholm got the offensive glass and goes up strong with it. Will be at the line for two. Chisholm already with 11 points in this ball game. And Wayne Chisholm playing inspired basketball here, knowing as a senior leader on this club. I asked him today. You know, we were looking for guys to talk to, trying to get the mood of this volunteer club. We asked to speak to Wayne Chisholm. I said, "Hey, we're looking for the leader of this club, and we found the right guy." He said, yes, sir, no doubt. <laughs> Good kid. He, you know, he said, in this situation, players oftentimes try to do too much, and he had to guard against that. He's had to be patient, 
share with his teammates here tonight. Uh, he does have three assists already because they got Scotty that can knock it down from the outside and JP slashing through the lane. And he's off to a great start. 13 points, three rebounds, three assists. And this after he really struggled out at Southern Cal a couple of games ago. Only one rebound. That was his lowest rebound total since his freshman season. But everybody struggled in that ballgame. Yes, just a disaster for the Tennessee club. I like seeing Woolbridge putting it on the floor like that, not settling for the three. Chisholm missed the three-pointer that time. Had a man in his face. Dewhurst. Get it back into the hands of Dewan Harris. Hard to put a lot of pressure on this Charlotte club because Dewan Harris is so quick. He can get into the lane, break down your defense, and set up opportunities for others to score. Making him on clock, though. There's Spears. He's working against Chisholm. Chisholm got a piece of it. Ended up in the hands of Dewhurst and put it in. This job by Dewhurst just hanging around the basket, waiting for the shot to go up from Spears. Dewhurst able to get the easy lay-in. Six-point lead for Tennessee. Does Bruce Pearl change his coaching style any now that he's got less talent to work with, so to speak? Certainly has less players to work with. And he does. He admitted that, that he has to back off the press a little bit because of the, the lack of depth that he has now. The Prince was fouled on the shot. He'll be at the line when we get back. 23 lead on Charlotte. Bernard King, one of the greatest players in Tennessee Volunteers basketball history. And guess who is in the building here tonight? Actually stopped by shoot around today, Barry, to talk to the team, give them encouragement, speak to them, remind them that being a part of the team was being a part of the family and that he was 100% behind them. Bernard King and a businessman in the Atlanta area now owns and operates an energy company and one of the all-time greats here at Tennessee a phenomenal score here and in the NBA with the Knicks giving the, the young men some words of encouragement today right off the inbound Chisholm tries to keep it alive and then Mays who missed tried to slip in there and grab the ball but couldn't Dewhurst slashing, pass inside was intercepted, long pass to Prince in the jam. Wayne Chisholm, when he gets possession of the basketball, he is looking deep every time, throwing it right down the middle of the court, a little post pattern there. Uh, J.P. Prince getting all the way to the basket for the slam. And how about Chisholm? He's already got four assists in this ball game. And uh, uh, at least two of them have come from him standing in the lane after getting possession of the basketball, throwing length of the court passes. Prince brings it up the floor for the Volunteers, and the ball was kicked by Dewhurst. Look at that. Great steal. A great defensive play and then a great offensive play. Absolutely. His head up as soon as he caught the basketball. And, uh, Coach Kiffin may want to check out I was gonna Wayne say, Chisholm. I'll tell you what, he has really stepped forward. You, you would expect that out of your senior leader, a guy to step forward in light of the circumstances, knowing that you're depleted, you're shorthanded. And here's the other guy, Scotty Hobson, out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, the Parade All-American. Six points tonight. Shooting the basketball extremely well. Watching him in practice the last couple of days, his confidence is much higher. Shooting the basketball with a lot greater consistency than he did earlier in the season. Just a fun kid to be around, too. Got a great <laughs> bubbly personality. Fun to sit down and talk to. Teasing him a little bit, back and forth today. We're three-point shooters. We kind of, we kind of got that thing going, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could join in that conversation. <laughs> Mays hits the runner. Look at that. Tennessee, 14 now out of 23 with the eight assists. They are really getting it done. And this is as fluid offensively as I have seen the Volunteers this year. Bobby Mays getting into the lane. The balls have had a few ill-advised three-point shots, but for the most part, they are attacking offensively, especially when they get steals. They are pushing it to the basket, trying to get all the way to the hoop. 
You know, oftentimes you measure the true character of a team by how they handle adversity. And here I would say the first two, 14, 14 minutes of this ball game, they have done a sparkling job. Absolutely. The volunteers responding very well to this difficult situation. And they are off to an excellent start against a good Charlotte 49er club. CSS-Sports.com is packed with everything you need to know for basketball, from schedules of upcoming games to scores and more. You can find it at CSS-Sports.com. Quite the impressive showing so far by this Volunteers team playing without the four suspended players, six scholarship players, three walk-ons. One of their best outings of the season, really. Dewhurst, the runner, shot it over the hoop. Chisholm lost it out of opportunities. Tennessee looking very good so far. Long pass was nearly intercepted by Mays as Harris had to go back to get it, and a reach-in foul is called on Hobson. Harris just driving it right back at that Tennessee defense, forcing that foul. Again, the long pass. They throw it 94 feet almost to get it in bounds. It almost hit the scoreboard. Man. Well, that's, a, that's a way to ensure that you get it in. Just throw it the length of the floor. Tennessee loves to press on those out of bounds situations. Mountain, Shamari Spears falling away. Spears has not been a big factor yet. Bill Jones, ball get knocked into the hands of Mays, and they want to run. It's a basket and a foul, blocking foul, will be called on Harris. Chisholm might get 20 before the half. Wayne Chisholm, acrobatic. In transition, Bobby Mays delivering the bounce pass. Chisholm has a defender underneath him. He knows he's going to take that contact with Dewan Harris trying to draw the charge. But Wayne Chisholm keeps his focus on that backboard, able to bank it home. 16 points for Chisholm. Five assists, three steals, a career high, and three rebounds. He might get a quadruple double tonight. 24 is season high, 27 last year, his career high. Dario Green stepped on the sideline. Seventh turnover for this Charlotte team that commits 13.2 a game, the number five total in the A-10. Chisholm gets a break. He has really been going. The first marquee signee of the Bruce Pearl era when Bruce came here from Milwaukee. Out of Jackson, Tennessee, Bolivar Central High School led them to the state title. Kenny Hall calling for the ball. Now the Volunteers back it up. Mays working around a pick. Mays launches the three. And a foul's going to be called on Charlotte. Chisholm, look at the box score here for Chisholm. 16 points, five assists. You don't see the career high three steals. He's done just about everything here tonight. Yeah, that's a that's an excellent night. If he stays on the sidelines the rest of the night, 16 and five, that's strong. And Wayne Chisholm leading leading the way for this volunteer club this evening. Kenny Halls, freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, Redan High School. Just his ninth free throw attempt of the season. <laughs> certainly in college basketball than Bobby Lutz. Well, he shaved it about four years ago, but uh, had a little promotion around campus this year. Bring back the stash. So Bobby Lutz grew it back. And the fans have encouraged him to hang on to it. We've gotten a big kick of it around, out of it around Charlotte these last few weeks. So he is playing along. After they went 11 and 20 and 2 and 14 on the road last season, they needed to change the culture and maybe the facial hair too. I don't know. <laughs> Bringing in Shamari Spears has not hurt. Chris Braswell, the freshman out of Capitol Heights, Maryland, that's helped as well. But right now they could use some help with the offense. Oh, for their last five, and they're in another scoring drought that's now approaching four minutes. And I question their shot selection. They have launched several quick three-point shots. Kenny Hall, 
assist given to Scotty Hobson. Tennessee flat rolling at the offensive end of the court, moving the basketball, sharing it nicely. Kenny Hall, the easy finish. Spears inside, fouled by Hobson. Volunteers are having fun right now. It's fun when you win. They have bolted out to a 20-point lead on a night when people wondered, what would we see from the Volunteers? Well, that's what you've seen from the Volunteers. Tennessee, a 20-point lead with 347 to play in the first half. And on a night when the Volunteers needed somebody to step forward, Wayne Chisholm has been the man. The leader got things started with this play. Right at the beginning of the game, the balls get it to him inside. Then he steps out, knocks home a three-point shot. He's been throwing length of the court passes, hustling at the rebounds, and inspiring this club and the crowd with some great play. 16 points, three rebounds, five assists, three steals. The three steals already a career high for him. And we are still in the first half. Spears, who we highlighted in our star watch, now only four points in the first half. Averages 17 a game, number six total in the A-10. Charlotte 49ers haven't gotten it to him inside to give him as many opportunities as they should in this ball game as the 49ers go to the zone defense. Skyler McBee, your classic zone buster. Prince will try it himself. Not a good shot. Hall, though, to finish. Hall likes those high percentage shots. Bruce Pearl called Kenny Hall his best offensive rebounder from the very outset, including those four that aren't here tonight. And Kenny Hall able to scrap, get that rebound, and get the slam. Kenny Hall has scored the last six points for the Volunteers. Guy averaging only three points a game. Kenny Hall just picked up his second personal foul, and Stephen Pearl makes an early entrance into this ball game. The coach's son, Wayne Chisholm, checks back in as well. The volunteers going to their tenth man now. Stephen Steve Pearl getting some run. Playing in only his seventh game. He's only played 18 minutes so far in the ball's first 12 games. All five points for Spears have come at the foul line tonight. He is 0 of 3 from the floor, furthering and elaborating on your point that they just haven't gotten the ball inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've been launching the 28-footers. Uh, <laughs> exactly. 49ers chucking it from deep. And they have a weapon inside in Shamari Spears, who is very difficult to handle down low. And he draws fouls on the opposition as well. Pass nearly intercepted. Chisholm went and got it. Prince attacks the basket, banked it in. What J.P. Prince does so well, slashing to the basket, able to get it up on the glass softly, get the finish for the balls. Approaching six minutes now since Charlotte last scored from the field. Against this Tennessee team, that's like that's a death sentence. You just, I mean, you can't not score against Tennessee. And Chisholm just added to his career high steal total. That was his fourth steal. Wayne Chisholm just playing great basketball, leading this club tonight with his effort, scoring, doing it defensively, doing it all for the balls. Coming up at halftime, Mike Hamilton, the athletics director here at the University of Tennessee, will join us courtside to talk about the recent incident. Well, I think there was a great curiosity factor, you know, talking to Scotty Hobson. He said, I think folks will come out tonight. They'll, they'll be curious to see, you know, what's happened to the volunteers. How will they play tonight? And I think they have given, given an emphatic answer that they're going to play the way they always play. We're going to run the floor. We're going to up tempo. And uh, we're going to do what we do. Don't change that. In Tennessee basketball, up tempo. Pressure defense. And the ball is really clicking offensively. Some good three point shooting, good play inside by Wayne Chisholm as well. McBee looking inside. Five on the shot clock. 
Bone, McBee loses his man and launches the three. Air balled it. Juan Harris brings it up the floor for Charlotte. Harris keeps it from being a backcourt violation. Charlotte, despite their predicament here tonight, one victory shy of matching last year's win total already. They were 11 and 20 a year ago. They could pick up an 11th win here tonight, although that would seem like it would be a difficult proposition for them, trailing by over 20 here in the first half. And Jones fouled. Tennessee right now on the court, and you're looking at guys who were 10th, 12th, yep. 13th in their rotation. Out there playing some minutes here in the first half. Pearl backing down Wilderness and traveling's the call. <laughs> there he is, getting some minutes in the first half, got the ball inside and decided, hey, I think I'll try the score. Green and Pearl got the rebound. Mays. And they will not allow the basket. He was fouled on the drive and not on the shot. Harris called for the foul. That's number two on him. SEC. The ball is clicking tonight in spite of the absences. And the volunteers that are available playing very well against the Charlotte 49ers. A difference of four seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Spears is back in there for his final possession. Nearly stolen, and it is by Bobby Mays. He took it from him and changed it home. 51st point of the half for the Volunteers. Largest lead for Tennessee. And it will stay their largest lead as the half is about to come to an end with three tenths of a second. Just a stellar first half from the Volunteers, clicking on all cylinders, shooting it well, playing especially well in transition and after the fourth turnover. Well, twice this season, the Volunteers have scored more than 100 points in the game. They did 124 against Asheville in game number two and 105 against East Carolina in game number three. And behind Wayne Chisholm, 16 points, three rebounds, and five assists, along with four steals. Tennessee has a 51-29 lead on Charlotte. Coming back to talk with Mike Hamilton in a moment. The University of North Carolina. Back, it's halftime at Thompson Bowling Arena with number 15, Tennessee, leading Charlotte 51-29. CSS is your home court advantage for college basketball this winter. Shooting 15 for 20 from two-point range, 75%. Only four for 12 from downtown. But Scotty Hobson has made a couple of three-point attempts, both of his. Wayne Chisholm knocked home a three-pointer. Ronaldo Woldridge starting for the first time in his college career. Five points in the first half for Woolrich. Chisholm doing work all over the place, including throwing great passes that J.P. Prince can convert into easy points. For Charlotte, Shamari Spears, the guy that we highlighted in our star watch. Well, not been much of a first half for him. Six points. Shamar Bowden has hit those uh, the two three-pointers, only six points for him. And Chisholm has the big line. And uh, Charlotte, three for 24 after that hot start in the first half. They're 20. They're only uh, uh, three for 24 in the finish. And Tennessee playing very well. Chisholm with the 16. Mays contributing nicely. J.P. Prince. All the volunteers really playing well this evening. Tennessee is the number one assist team in the SEC, averages 17 a game. They've got 10 already tonight, and they've got a 22-point lead as Bernard King signs some autographs. <laughs> the, because the last time Charlotte was here, it's known on the campus as the comeback, and they've got a big comeback to make after no field goals in the last 8-17 of the first half. But the last time they were here, a big comeback. In fact, they rallied from 26 points down, Barry, from a score close to what we have right here. It was 53-27 on the night of November 29th, 1995, and they came back and won that game, 79-76. ESPN says it was the fourth largest comeback of all time. 
So this is nothing. Yeah. You're only down 22. It's no problem here. Charlotte does love to launch the three-point shots. If they can get rolling from downtown, they may be able to fight their way back into this game. Tennessee, of course, important to start well here in the second half. Don't want to give the 49ers any life, any hope that they're going to come back and win this game. Well, in order to get that big comeback, what did Bobby Lutz tell him at halftime? He told him to get it inside. Let's get our big fellas involved. At least give them a chance. Now, too late in the shot clock. Got to launch. You're down to two on the shot clock, and they're not going to get a shot off. Shot clock violation. What a way to start the first half. What a way Second to, half, I should say. What a way to start for the Volunteers. Getting after it defensively, shutting down the opportunities inside for Charlotte. Although I like the patience from Charlotte. Of course, that possession turned out, unfortunately, for the 49ers. But I like their patience trying to get it inside. Mays, basket, blocking foul. He'll be at the line for a chance at a three-point play, and Green gets whistled for that one, his first. And Doug Sermon's indicating that this is a new rule. You cannot take a charge standing underneath the basket. It's going to be a block whether you're planted there or not. Bobby Mays getting the score and getting the chance to turn that into a three-point play. Commonly referred to as the NBA rule, but they don't have the circle painted in the paint like they do in the NBA. And Speaking to several officials, I won't call out their names, but they said, well, it would really make our job easy if they would just take a bucket of paint and put a little stripe under there, the uh, kind of the semicircle like you have in the NBA. But the NCAA has not done that, citing cost is one of the reasons, and it would be difficult, of course, to implement it so quickly. I think that would make their job harder, actually. I think it would be more difficult for the officials to identify that little circle. You see the red box there. You, the the uh, officials, the powers that be deciding you're not playing defense if you're standing right underneath the basket, underneath the backboard. We're not going to give you a charge for just standing there. And it's a dangerous situation with players jumping as high as they do, driving to the basket and getting another player underneath. Hobson off front iron. Too deep with that. Too far out. Spears is 0 for 5 in this ball game, and Green was fouled on the three-point shot, so he'll be at the line for three free throws. But the game, which is the second best total in the A-10. The far-flung A-10, we should say. 14-team conference that opens their 16-game schedule this weekend for the 49ers as they host St. Bonaventure. Not all the teams make the conference tournament. It's a difficult situation. Only 12 teams admitted to the tournament. So you hate to be one of those two that doesn't get invited to the conference tournament. Right to the hole goes DeWan Harris. Not all the teams are on the Atlantic seaboard either. You have St. Louis in the middle of the country in the A-10. Midwestern clubs. Prince off the money. Tried to bang it off the foot of Woolridge. Got Chisholm back playing defense. And Green spots up and takes the three. Thought he'd rather take the three than challenge Wayne Chisholm. Probably the correct decision in a timeout has been called by Bruce Pearl. Charlotte has cut the Tennessee lead down to 17. Be sure to check out Talking Hoops on CSS starting two Friday nights. Inside, we're a lot better in there. Bruce Pearl needs to tell his club the same thing. As you can see, the great disparity in shooting from two-point range versus three-point range. The Vols have taken have twos, four for 15 from three-point range, 16 for 21. Charlotte has not been able to stop the Vols when they have been around the basket. But that three-point shot is such a seductive shot for the basketball player, isn't it? Yes, it is. You get three for one shot, <laughs> and you don't have to go in there and battle anybody for positioning and get knocked around. You just stand out there and stroke a three. Sounds great. Give me the it ball. It does, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty. Called a fringe player frequently by Coach Sam Newton <laughs> during my days at Vanderbilt. Not going in there where it's thick. Yeah. Not going to mix it up. But, Coach, you get three if you yeah. hit it behind this line. Do <laughs> the I, math. I can shoot it. This shot's easy. Come exactly. on. Do the math. <laughs> Numbers here for 
the 49ers. Good Lord. Green likes to shoot the three. Don't get him going. If you're a volunteer fan, you don't want to see that happen. What? Nine points. What horrendous half. shot selection. But it goes at two. The comeback in Tennessee helping them out in their comeback by going one for six with two turnovers so far in this half. 26 point lead 15 years ago. Lead is down to 12, and that Charlotte bench is up on their feet. 49ers attacking the rim here to get going in the second half. Very effective offensively as their aggression at the offensive end has increased. 13-0 run to open the half. And now Tennessee slows down the tempo. Does this work in their favor, Barry? They have not been a very good half court team this year. They just committed another turnover, too. So Charlotte on a 13-0 run, Tennessee's. And the 49ers shaving 10 points off that 22-point halftime lead that Tennessee enjoyed, putting the pressure on these volunteers. Four for six here in the second half as Charlotte has made a more concerted effort to get the ball inside. But remember, they also started the game five for five <laughs> and cooled off significantly and in a hurry. Dario Green. Ball kept alive, and Prince gets it ahead to Skyler McBee. He challenges Green. Green got it and tipped it in. Great hustle by Kenny Hall. Kenny man. Hall got down there and tipped it in. Dario Green, Prince fell down. He couldn't take advantage of it. Green works to the other side. And whip it around. Spears got stripped on his way to the hoop. Was it called? Nope, they're just going to say out of bounds on Tennessee. Tennessee fans wanting that call off the leg of Shamari Spears as he was heading the basketball chopped out of there. And they see the replay, <laughs> and it did bounce off Spears' thigh out of bounds. And Charlotte gets that break. Wilderness, long inbounds comes to... Dewan Harris. Volunteers able to end that 13 zip run that Charlotte was on here early in the second half. Dewan Harris, the number one assist man in the A-10, five assists per game. They get it to Wilderness, and he lays it in, and the run continues. They get it back to 12. After Kenny Hall had stopped the bleeding with that tip in after the miss by McVee on the previous fast break. We got a ball game again. And Tennessee with their, their lack of depth, guys playing a few more minutes than they're used to. But I think it's shot selection and focus that's the problem for the balls here in the second half. Dario Green's going to be called for his second foul as he battled Kenny Hall for the offensive board. Bad shot from Wayne Chisholm off a perimeter pass trying to knock home a three. That's difficult. And Kenny Hall scrapping on the offensive backboards. And Chisholm has gone 11 minutes without a field goal. McBee way off the mark. And Tennessee launching it from three-point range, allowing Charlotte to get back into this game. You know, they did such a great job of getting the ball to Chisholm in that first half. That's how they started the game so effectively. But here's Charlotte. You know, head coaches often talk about the first five minutes of the second half. Got to be a charge there. It is a charging foul. They let lead down to 12. And here they are down to 10 already. And it's still nearly 14 minutes left in the game. And you know, Bruce Pearl told us today that he wanted his ball club to be able to handle whatever came their way tonight. And that first half didn't look like there was going to be any issues. But now they're facing some adversity. Do they panic? Well, Tennessee has had so many games where they have absolutely blown opponents away. It looked like that's what was going to happen against this Charlotte club. Wow! Eight-point lead as Phil Jones knocks down the shot. Meantime, where's Chisholm in the offense? One shot in the last 12 minutes. Steal by Harris. It's a one-on-three. Takes it to the hole anyway and got the back. Get the lead is down to six. Bruce Pearl, who doesn't like to call timeouts, 
has no recourse but to use one right here. A freshman up there playing important minutes with Charlotte making a run. Skyler McBee, another freshman out there in a critical situation. Will he have the understanding to keep his composure and know what to do in this situation? And that's what you do, get it inside. Hall has the only four points for the Volunteers during this drought. In this drought. Kenny Hall averaging three points a game, eight minutes a game through the first 13 games of the season for the Balls, and here he is playing some big minutes for the Balls tonight. And a foul is called on Charlotte. That one's going to be on Cheryl. Eight-point lead for Tennessee. They have led by as much as 22. The lead at halftime was 51-29, and then Charlotte went on a 21-5 jag to cut it down to eight points. Tennessee's very cold shooting here in the second half. Kenny Hall having trouble with the ball. Chisholm down on top of it, and a jump ball is called. The possession arrow is pointing in favor of the Volunteers. In Tennessee with that 20-point edge at halftime, the 22-point edge at halftime. I think they just relax. Yeah. Let up, let off the pedal. I would think that's just human nature. Ball got fouled by Dewhurst. Eight minutes into the second half, Bruce Pearl upset with a team that has blown a 22-point lead. It's eight right now. Charlotte has outscored them by two touchdowns here in the first eight minutes, 21 to seven. Yeah, Charlotte 49ers not giving up after a subpar first half. Tune in Wednesday, January 13th for more live. Last year, Charlotte two of 14, two and 14 on the road. Five wins already on the road this season. Victories on the road against Elon. Yale at Hofstra at Louisville, a 22-point victory over Rick Patino, handing him his worst home loss, and at Winthrop. Tennessee has to settle down offensively. Kenny Hall now playing the post. Of 11. Kind of a role reversal for these two teams from the first half. 73% for Charlotte so far here in the second half. Dewan Harris rebound. Shamari Spears left it short. Tip in on the follow by Chris Braswell, the fine freshman. We haven't called his name much tonight. That's a big bucket. That's his first points of the evening. And Woolridge answers with a three. Tennessee still launching the three-pointers. That will not get them to the finish line tonight, I don't believe. Ronaldo Wardridge playing bigger minutes for the ball tonight, getting the start this evening for Tennessee after coming into this game, averaging only eight minutes a game. And Ronaldo Wardridge playing very well for Tennessee. Dario Green on the drive. Shot was blocked by Kenny Hall. And the putback, however, by Charlotte. Tennessee settling for the three-point jumpers, and that will get the balls in deeper trouble if that shot selection continues. That basket was the first for Spears in this ball game. Skyler McBee, three-pointer. Curled around and hit the three. Ten-point lead for the Volunteers. These young guys that are getting the opportunity due to those suspensions, stepping up and playing well for Tennessee. McBee banging home his first points of the night. We'll see if they try to get that ball inside the Spears again. One of eight, one of the top shooters in the conference. Spears battling for the ball. Spears has only touched the ball by happenstance. They really have not been able to feed it to him. He gets offensive rebounds or deflections, but... Ariel Green gets into the paint. Dewhurst on the drive, out of control. Offensive foul on Dewhurst. Nice job by Ronaldo Wildert standing in, taking that hit. Tennessee, they've got their lead back up to 10 with possession now. The second foul on Dewhurst. 
for approaching 10 minutes to play in this ball game with the Volunteers at one time leading by as much as 25. Having seen the lead cut down to six, it's 10 right now. Four starters back in the game along with Skyler McBee. Good shot there. McBee warming to the pass. That's two consecutive three pointers for McBee as the Volunteers lead bolts out to 13 points. Bobby Lutz really upset with the officials. He felt like they missed a call right in front of his bench a couple of moments ago. And McBee has responded by hitting two consecutive three-pointers on the Volunteers' last possession since. Inside to J.P. Prince, back out for Skylar McBee. You see the space that he has to get set. He knows where the defender's it, where the defender is. Skylar McBee able to get on balance and bang home another three. Tennessee has bolted back out to a 13-point lead with 9.50 to play in this ballgame. Here's a look at the three players who have received more playing time tonight as a result of the suspensions, and here's what they've done. Woolridge, eight points tonight, averages three and a half. Hall, 10 points tonight, averages three. And Bone, who came into the ball game with two points all season, has matched that here tonight. And 20 points for those three players coming in, averaging seven and a half. Those three players responding to the opportunity to get on the court tonight. Zone defense from Tennessee. Inside Braswell. Braswell, ball got stuck between the backboard and the rim. Has more double doubles. Already has more double doubles than Rodney White and Cedric Maxwell did in their freshman year. Dewhurst goes up over McBee to get the rebound, trying to reverse layup, got fouled. Charlotte as a, as a team right at 74%, second best in the A-10. Dewhurst doesn't dribble. Give him the basketball. 12-point lead. Tennessee in search of their 11th victory. In what would be their third straight. Prince on the drive. Woolridge. <laughs> Great body control by Woolridge. He was all over the place. And that guy was the 11th man in Tennessee's rotation a week ago. Ronaldo Woodridge, a phenomenal athlete. You could see the body control and the hang time there slashing in for two. Six points for Woolridge. Inside they go to Braswell. Rejected by Chisholm. Tennessee heating up again. McBee's shooting got things going in the right direction. Chisholm's pass <laughs> needs a little bit more touch. <laughs> fired that off of Prince's knee, nearly broke his kneecap. And a little fired up <laughs> on that one. McBee comes out of the ball game. Scotty Hobson back in. Now the starters back on the court for Tennessee. These young men have logged quite a few more minutes than they're used to. We'll see if they have the energy to finish. Driving Harris, dishing to Spears. He wasn't ready for it. Prince goes by his man and lays it in. Silky smooth. The lead is back to 16. J.P. Prince so effective in the open court, slashing to the basket. He is in double figures for the game tonight. Tennessee on a 10-1 run. Have they weathered the storm? Harris. Well, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> as long as Charlotte's got a three-point shot to take, maybe not. And a turnover by Tennessee. And Harris goes right at Mays and gets fouled. And Harris will be at the line when we get back. J.P. Prince, one of the guys got to step up for this Volunteers team right to the hole. Nothing says love, nothing says love like beef.
for breakfast. Try Chick-fil-A's tasty chicken biscuits, chicken minis, or breakfast burritos. The other energy drinks I was using, they're way too big, way too much sugar. It's insane. Five Out Energy is the complete opposite. There's no sugar and there's no crash. Way smaller package. You can just take it as a shot or two quick gulps. When I'm on the phone talking to customers on the East Coast, I gotta be alert, I gotta be awake. Don't even consider all the other drinks. There's no contest. It's five energy all the way. I definitely get a perk of mental energy for sure. I'm, I'm just quicker. Five hour energy is my go-to drink. Preparation, preparation, preparation. We instill that in every point shot so far tonight. Ronaldo playing with a lot of confidence despite not getting a lot of point time so far on the year. Ten points so far for him in this ballgame. Closing in on over his 9.5 points per game average. Thompson takes it right at the basket, and that's the volunteers that perform so well in the first half, take the ball to the hole. That's what Scotty Hobson does best. He is a decent three-point shooter, but he is most effective using his size, driving it to the hole. Offensive foul called on Wilderness. Don't know about that one. See the defender go down, but not a lot of contact based on the offensive player. But you know what officials are trained to do? They watch the defender. Mm -hmm. So if the defender can sell it, hit the deck, make it look like he got drilled, they can buy that foul call sometimes. Prince looks over to Bruce Pearl to get the instructions, and Prince in a role that Tyler Smith would typically be in right there on that position. Traveling the call. 14th turnover for the Volunteers in this ball game. Five players in double figures for the Volunteers, led by Chisholm, 16 points. All of that came in the first 16 minutes of the game. Mays with 10, Woolridge 10, Paul and Prince with 10. Yeah, Chisholm out of the box, 16 points before we got to the five-minute mark of the first half. No points since then for Wayne Chisholm. Green. Chisholm grabs another rebound. You know, Wayne said uh, they their their job was to stay positive. If you think negative, then you play poorly. And I think all in all, watching them in the shoot around today, they had a very positive attitude. Ulrich tried to dunk from too far out. He's long, not that long. <laughs> but you got to love the aggressive move to the basket. Ronaldo Woldrich got bumped by the big fella, Phil Jones. Wilderness was the one called for the foul. And the foul was called after the, after the rebound. Wayne scoring about two points and two rebounds less per game than he did last season. As you mentioned, the, he's had the problem with the pelvis. I got a problem with the pelvis, too. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Jones in trouble, gets it up to Wilderness. Wilderness was fouled in the paint. He got fouled by his own guy. <laughs> Bumped into Phil Jones there. Chisholm was the one who got whistled for that foul. And that's it. Missing the foul shot. <laughs> and who touched it last? Apparently, Tennessee did. Hopson. The Tennessee back in control of this game. Bruce Pearl working the foul shot. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he just swallowed something sour. <laughs> Telling, uh, actually, I guess he was body English in the rebound. And a turnover here on Charlotte. Possession to Tennessee. Ian Anderson in the ball game for the first time turned it over. Bobby Lute's team made a big run at Tennessee, but now time working against him as the Volunteers' lead is 15 with under six to play. Ashbone forced into the backup point guard role for Tennessee. The walk-on, effective there, playing against one of the quicker players in the nation. Hobson, Hobson nails the three. You get that lead up to 15, everybody relaxes a little bit more. Those three-point shots aren't quite as difficult. 
You know, you said he was more of a slasher than a three-point shooter, but he had taken over the team lead in field goal accuracy from behind the three-point line at over 41%. So Tennessee now with an 18-point lead, not yet time for them to look ahead, but we will as they have the number one Kansas Jayhawks coming to Thompson Bowling Arena on Sunday afternoon. Here's what they've done all time against number one teams. And you see a 3-10 and ten record overall. Last playing the number one team in 08 when they defeated Memphis. And we all remember that one as that broke the Tigers' big 26-game winning streak to start the season. And not often you get the opportunity to play against the top-ranked team in the country. This will be Tennessee's 14th crack at that and getting them on your home court. Should be a lot of fun on Sunday in this building. And the Vols should be, feel pretty good about themselves having put on a nice effort so far tonight. And you see in Bruce Pearl's first two seasons, they went 32-0 at home last year, a step backwards, 10-5. Got knocked out in the first round of the NCAA, and they are back to where they were with an undefeated home record here, and it looks like they will improve to 7-0 tonight. As Charlotte had cut that lead to six, but Tennessee has outscored them 22 to 10 cents. I thought someone got teed up. Ah, double technical. Oh, we had a double technical. That's what it was. Chisholm and uh, Spears who were mixing it up a little bit. And so Chisholm. So a significant blow for the balls. They cannot afford foul trouble with no. only six scholarship players. You know, and that leads me to what I was getting ready to talk about with Kansas coming to town. And there's a nice feed from Hobson. He's having a fun time. And Hall with the finish. Hobson likes to play to the crowd now, doesn't he? I, I think so. <laughs> he, he enjoys the attention. <laughs> no question about that. The center of attention. Anyway, going back to what I was talking about, you know, Chisholm and the foul trouble he's had tonight against Charlotte, and that was a concern for Bruce Pearl. How about on Sunday when Cole Aldridge comes in here with Kansas? Yeah. That he's going to have his hands full. It will be quite a test for this Tennessee ball club. <laughs> a failed alley-oop, a failed layup, and then a put-in. Hobson has 13, and Lutz calls a timeout, signals down his bench and said, you guys get in here. Those guys ain't doing it right. CSS begins coverage of SEC gymnastics beginning Tuesday, J at 7-7. Seven and seven. All the rest of their teams have had losing records that they've beaten. That old Dominion game, a real head scratcher there. Wins by 33. I know you're on the road, but Charlotte is better than that. Tennessee, on the other hand, at 10 and 2 on the season, hard to imagine with a schedule that has included Memphis and also uh, College of Charleston, DePaul, that their best RPI win was their season opener against Austin P. Governors out yeah, of the OVC. Their RPI right now is 96, and that's ahead of Memphis. Spears goes up, had his shot blocked, and then blocked again, and Spears is going to be at the line. 310 of their last 13 shots had the Volunteers. Spears at the line, that's 11 points, and now that's 12. And he out to Houston, where the Houston Cougars are standing by to take on their crosstown rivals, the Rice Owls. Conference USA Basketball next, right after this one. Tennessee working on the game clock right now. 18 point edge. Ball's content to work that shot clock down. Mays pulls up at the elbow. A long kick out rebound controlled by Harris. Has a trailer. Ian Anderson, he's top 10 all time in their three point shooting. Didn't hit that one though. Tennessee had a little bit of a scare here early in the second half, but by and large, I think a successful evening, Barry, considering we opened the show tonight talking about the four suspended players and how it would impact them on the basketball court, how statistically it was impacting them from the standpoint of loss of production. I think the guys that stepped forward tonight have covered the job very well. They really have. Tennessee 
that distraction with those players and of course the, the lost production having an impact on this team but the ball still putting forth a strong effort tonight knocking off a decent UNC Charlotte club. Doken Siren with the three pointer right there and of course things will get even more interesting for this volunteers team as Kansas comes to town on Sunday and then they open their SEC schedule a week from tomorrow a late open for Tennessee as most teams are getting underway this weekend they'll be hosting the Auburn Tigers. It's another fun year coming up yeah. in the Southeastern Conference. Hoxham going to get a chance to go one on one. Two on the shot clock and Mays with the runner. That's what you want to do in these late game situations. Work that shot clock down, get a shot off at the end. And if it goes in, all the better. Our next game on CSS for the Volunteers will not be until March 3rd when they take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Produce, even though Charlotte's a very good program, this is the ninth all-time meeting. The big storyline here tonight about the loss of those four players and will or will they not come back. We talked to Mike Hamilton at halftime, and uh, they're not yet ready to make that decision. Although Coach Hamilton did indicate that there probably would be some news coming up in the next few days about that situation. So, Coach Hamilton, Coach Pearl, uh, privy to some information that hasn't gone public quite yet. So, maybe some news on uh, exactly what will be the outcome of that situation as far as those players with this team. You saw Tennessee after their three. 10 start from the floor really turned things on hitting 11 of their last 16. Scotty Hobson had a big second half and he'll finish with 15 points or thereabouts if he doesn't score again. Yeah, I think the indication is that, you know, the four players have kind of been lumped into one bag because they were all arrested at the same time. But the punishments for those four players might not all be the same because the circumstances surrounding each of the players is not the same and Mike Hamilton says we want to be fair and treat them as individuals and not as a group. I think that's the right approach. Of course the easy thing to do for the university would be hey we're punishing those guys we're cutting them loose we're getting bad publicity so we'll just send those guys packing but those guys lives are on the line in this situation. Their career here at Tennessee their educational opportunities so we will see what the facts tell us about the situation and how the university decides to handle it. Oh, how about that? Scotty Hobson with the cherry on top. <laughs> His final two points of the night. Memorable. Anderson banks it in. And here's a look at those three players that we talked about off the top and the production that they would need to provide in their roles. Kenny Hall stepping up there. Ronaldo Woolridge getting his first start. Josh Bone giving him a few minutes here and there. And it all spells a big Tennessee victory as they will now be 11 and two on the season. Six players in double figures as the Volunteers win it 88-71. Yeah, very impressive by Tennessee. They roll a lot of production from a lot of different sources for these balls. Bruce Pearl shakes hands with Bobby Lutz. Wayne Chisholm scores 18 points, 16 in the first half. Scotty Hobson gets hot in the second and finishes with 17. And now the Volunteers get ready for number one, Kansas. Tennessee, an 88-71 win over Charlotte. And now for Barry Booker and the entire crew, I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Knoxville. Houston at Rice is next.